Hello and welcome to today's special presentation of state semifinal soccer and girls division three. Doug Jenkins and Nate Garlock along with you here on WOSN for what should be a great matchup. Ottawa Glendorf coming out of the Northwest at 20 and one on the season. will be taking on the Manchester Panthers undefeated this year, 22 and 0. Nate, a matchup of last year's state semifinalist, a rematch from yeah, last year. Yeah, I mean, it should be an incredible game. Two teams that met in this game last year, Ottawa Glendorf came on top 2-0 in that one. Um, unfortunately, fell a little short of that state title. But So both of these teams come in. You know, obviously, they're hungry. You got a little bit of both sides, though. Manchester obviously wanting to um, earn back that loss from last year. But Ottawa Glendor feeling like they have unfinished business as well as they want to get to that state championship game and bring home the title. That was nearly a dangerous pass trying to find Danny doing Delaney Doolin coming down the middle. Couldn't quite hit that diagonal ball. And the Titans trying to get it into their attacking third. Didn't take them too long in the regional finals against Eastwood. They scored in under two minutes against uh, the Eagles on Saturday. The Titans looking for another quick one here. And boy, when they score first, which happens most of the time because they don't give up many goals, Nate, uh, they are quite dangerous. Yeah, no, I think that's going to be a big key here to this game. You know, both defenses are just phenomenal. Manchester's only given up eight goals all year long. They had not given up any goals in the tournament until the regional final where they gave up two. Uh, they had a really unique situation yes, going on in that. You know, tonight they're starting their backup goalie because their senior starting goalie ended up with a red card in that regional final, so she'll have to sit this one out. But, you know, on the other side, Ottawa Glendorf, you hear eight goals in a season, great defense, you know, that, that's going to be hard to top. But Ottawa Glendorf, they've only given up six so far this season. And a shutout all the way through the tournament and a chance to get on the board first with a set play. Corner kick coming up as Delaney Dooling was pushing the issue on the left side. She will take the corner from the left. Sends it into play. That one rolls around in the goal box for a moment. Will be cleared away, hustling back to get to that is Megan Horseman, who keeps it on the attacking third for the Titans. A lot of heat on that pass, though. Going to be hard to keep in play, and it'll be a throw in coming in for the Panthers. Yeah, you got to think Ottawa Glendorf not happy with that corner. Uncharacteristic for not for Blue Jerseys to not be around that ball, but that corner came in, fell a little bit short. Manchester did a nice job of clearing it out. Micah Aldrich had a pride away from her momentarily. Throw in, though, coming up for the Titans. They'll quickly get it to Dueling here on the left side. Stolen away by the Panthers. Pass, though, back down the field deflected. Nice play by Horseman to get her head on it. But ultimately ends up out of play and a throw in coming up for Manchester. Manchester's only played in a couple of close games. Titans haven't played in very many close games either. Like you said, it was a very dramatic regional final against uh, champion out of Warren for the Panthers on Saturday when they won 3-2 to two and lost their keeper in the process. Beyond that, their only real close game within a goal of each other was uh, back on October 7th, the regular season matchup against Cuyahoga Valley Christian Academy out of Cuyahoga Falls. Meantime, for the Titans, not a lot of close games for Ottawa Glendorf either as the majority of the time, they're winning by two or more. They had that two uh, nothing win over Finley way back uh, at the beginning of the season, the 3-1 win over Anthony Wayne. And uh, now back to the action here in Shelby. You're talking about this Manchester team, 22-0 undefeated. We're going to have another corner kick here. Ottawa Glandorf comes in with just the one loss, but they, you know that's the Division One program in Perrysburg. Yeah. So when you know in Division Three, they have been clean across the board. They'll get a chance at another corner this time from the far side corner. You can tell they like to crash on these corners. A lot of girls coming on that back post. That one got down in a hurry. Titans can't get a shot out of it. Can they contain possession? No, they could not. A little bit too much pace on that pass to the outside. It'll be a throw in once again for Manchester. You got to think here early. Manchester really wants to make sure that they limit shots on goal. Let their goalie. She got a lot of playing time. She played 51 minutes Ooh, as that shot Reed came Douglas in with the left. Just Some, missed. And a power left foot that time. Kind of came out of nowhere. Didn't even look like she set it up. A nice one-time kick. But the uh, the goalkeeper from Manchester. She played 51 minutes in that regional final. She did get some quality time in. Gave up a goal. Um, to make that, it, she came in when it was tied 1-1, ended up giving up a goal later in the second half. But you still got to think, even with a couple of practices under her belt, Manchester would really like to let her get comfortable back there and not see a lot of shots tonight. Absolutely. As it's played forward by Aldrich, Titans trying to attack this back line of Manchester. 
Nate, we were talking before we went on the air, the air here, a very senior-dominated Manchester team, especially on that back line. The defense has a lot of experience. Yes, they do. Five of the six defensive players they put back there are all seniors. Uh, a lot of experience. They don't make a lot of mistakes. And they're able to send that one away before the Titans could cause it to be an issue. But it's Ottawa Glandorf controlling the pace here in the opening five minutes of this one, although maybe something happening in the counter for the Panthers here. Trying to switch field. Send it to the other side. It was Brooklyn Lepley. But the Titans able to take it back. Gary Douglas bringing it to the middle of the field. That's a great diagonal ball to the left side. Delaney Dooling giving chase. The keeper coming out. The ball to flex off of her, but there is nobody trailing the play for the Titans to get there. And the Panthers are able to send it away. What a chance for Ottawa Glendorf. When you look back in a game that's going to be most likely what we believe at least very tight from start to finish, it, when you get to the end and a winner is determined, you start looking back at this game may get decided by mistakes. Ottawa Glendorf doesn't make very many, but they had a mistake right there. They had a good look at it, and they almost took in a mistake of uh, Manchester. You saw M McKinney. She was late coming out to that one. She yeah. should have charged that one sooner. That's still some of that inexperience from being back in goal but not a single blue jersey trying to chail on a rebound, and that is a huge missed opportunity. Uncharacteristic for the Titans, too. They're usually swarming towards the ball. You have to feel the way that this game is playing in the early goings. Though Ottawa Glendorf going to get some more looks at it. They've already had two shots, one on goal there. Ball played over on the far sideline. Titans trying to deny access to the attacking half of the field for Manchester, and they do. Quick throw in. That one did not find its mark. The defense for the Panthers will control, except for taken back by the Titans. There's the through ball. Could not quite find the mark as they were trying to get it to McKenna Siefker. Of course, McKenna Siefker leads the Titans with 33 goals this year. Now perhaps a counter for the Panthers. Trying to get some numbers as they bring it up the field. That one off the back foot of Craddock. Drop it back, and the Panthers play it over to the left sideline. Trying to play it out wide, see if they can get something to develop in there. There's a centering pass. Not touched away initially by the Titans, but the pass got all the way back to the Titans' uh, horseman who sends it up the field, Delaney Dooling. Nearly a one-on-one -on -one breakaway. Had it pried away from her, but Ottawa Glandorf will have it coming back this direction. Long pass down the line. Dueling could not contain it, and it will be out of bounds. Another throw-in coming up for the Panthers. Quickly to Aldrich. Played forward, and now cleared away by the Panther defense. And the Panther defense has been under attack here for probably the first seven minutes of this game. Now they're starting to be able to stretch it down the other side of the field, Nate, and maybe make something happen for themselves offensively. Yeah, they're finally getting a little bit of room as Ottawa Glendorf has had to play in some tight spacing. and A couple of long touches, see another loss on a 50-50 ball right there by the Titans. But I'll tell you what, every time that Manchester seems like maybe they're going to spend some time on the, their offensive third, Ottawa Glendorf's right there looking for a, char a counter opportunity right here. Here it comes. Pass across the net. There's the shot. Finds the back of the net off the foot of McKenna Siefker. And Ottawa Glendorf is on the board with 32 minutes remaining in the first half. McKenna Siefker finds the back of the net. We'll take a timeout. Back with more on WOSN. Welcome back to Shelby. Today's game is service of Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. McKenna Seifker scores a goal eight minutes into the contest, and Ottawa Glandorf leads Manchester in the state semifinal by a score of one to nothing. And Nate, you got to think they're thinking of more as well as they've been on the attack early and often already. Absolutely. We were literally just in the middle of that run talking about how Manchester was finally finding a little bit of space. Ottawa Glandorf, though, went immediately on the counter. And what a great feat. Followed that one all the way down to that back line. Was able to get it right back into the middle for Siefker to have a pretty easy goal and look at it. And you got to think, that's got to be a backbreaker for Manchester. You know, we talked about how prolific their defense had been. They have had a relatively easy easy tournament run they've had you know when you look at their scores you see 8 yeah. 8 well that's only because that must mean that game ended because <laughs> this year point. this year with the new rules in place at eight nothing differential from halftime on 
g- tournament games end. Yes. So they haven't even had to play full games for almost half of their tournament so far. And coming out here in the first eight minutes, Otto Glendorf able to put it in, especially with all the extra emotion, considering this was a rematch from last year. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how Manchester is able to rebound after giving up that early goal. Uh, the Titans gonna get a steal out north towards midfield. Couldn't quite connect on the pass. And now the Panthers a chance to turn and face. They wanted to go outside looking for Hageman, but unable to do so. Horseman, another steal. Horseman's pass, though, is intercepted and sent back towards the Titan defense. Micah Aldrich retreats, picks it up, sends it down the field just behind uh, McKenna Siefker there. And we kind of battle it back and forth for possession. Now, that's an interesting point that uh, 8-0 rule. I didn't even really think about that when looking at their scores. But, yeah, they ended a lot of games early. And I'm a little bit surprised coming out of Northeast Ohio. There's generally some good soccer that way, especially the Division Three. You've got some smaller uh, parochial schools in the Cleveland area that have some good teams. Uh, Manchester coming out of that certainly, uh, like you said, fairly easy except for that regional championship game yeah three of their five tournament games have all ended early they haven't had to play you know a full 80 minutes yet and so you you wonder if you know if that's a good or a bad thing however you want to determine that but with an offense that has been as prolific as this offense has been you know know that they know they can score you know that i i can't imagine we're going to see a lack in confidence with that early goal given up no absolutely not the titans try to get a steal back but there's a nice pass out to the left side Taken away by Ottawa Glendorf, looking to switch the field here. That one rolled out of bounds. However, getting that early goal for Ottawa Glendorf, you have to think, puts a little bit of doubt in the backup keeper in Jaden McKinney and her first start. It's almost, you know, sometimes it's easier when you come into like a high pressure situation like that as a keeper or in one of those positions where all eyes are on you. Hey, you didn't have to think about it. You just come in and do your thing. This week she's had to think about it, but now the Panthers on the attack looking for a shot. That one is going to roll wide. Was it last touched by the Titans? Yes, it was, and it will be a corner kick coming up now for Manchester, their first of the game. And best opportunity Manchester has had for a goal yet. So we'll see how they're able to play. Ottawa Glandorf has not looked good on their corners. Manchester hoping that they can have a better opportunity here. Alacratic set to put the corner kick in play. Manchester will play one player up near the keeper. That one, it's a nice, nicely played ball, headed out of bounds, and it was last touched off of Manchester, so it will be a goal kick coming up Ottawa Glendorf. Yeah, they're, they're very good. They like doing that, being able to send it in. They like playing it off the head. They got an own goal um, in the regional final off of that just because of the traffic they throw in there and some of the chaos that they can they can cause. And, you know, you think right there, it looked like they were trying to maybe do that same thing, but that one goes a little bit wider than that. Pass over to the right side for the Panthers. Hageman looking to set it in, chase towards the outside, and that's good defense played by Horseman to force it out of bounds. It will be a Panther throw-in, though, coming in from the near sideline. Deep in their attacking third. Elocratic initiates it. Centering pass is briefly deflected. Can they get a left foot shot on goal? Yes, they can! But the shot is saved by Carson Erford. Carson Erford standing tall right there because that left foot shot was coming in with some power. It was a great look at it. It was a nice play to the middle of the field where Ottawa Glandorf didn't have anybody to challenge, but Erford comes up big with the save. Misplayed ball got out of bounds. The shot came off the foot of Emily Allman. And you know, we got a whistle on the throw. It's because we have a substitution. Emma Herringhouse will come in. Herringhouse will take the place of Delaney Doling. You got to, uh, you're probably a little envious of Coach Michelle Mag when she can bring someone with 10 goals on the season just off the bench as she's been very productive as a Herringhouse this season. Aldrich trying to turn, bring it back downfield. Long pass out to the left sideline. A lot on that one. Bree Douglas able to come up with it. Douglas has been a key distributor this year, leads the team in assists. There's the cross, and that is sent back towards Douglas. It'll go out of bounds. Look like this will be a throw-in from deep in Ottawa Glendorf's attacking third of the field. And Douglas didn't really have much she could do with that one, and she didn't have a whole lot of teammates down there trying to see if she maybe couldn't get it off of Manchester for a corner, and they did say corner. corner. From our angle, it looked like it came on this side of the flag, but Ottawa Glendorf with their third corner opportunity. Well, it'll be Douglas who will take it with the right foot. See four players in the backside of the goal box. 
Can they get a good header? That one has popped up, and Titans not going to be able to keep that in play. So 25-56 remaining here in the first half on the structure outdoor scoreboard. It is 1-0 in favor of Ottawa Glandorf. Again, tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Ottawa Glendorf cannot be happy with their uh, attempts on corner. We saw the first two end up short that time. Douglas tried to put a little bit extra on it, send it too far out. And they couldn't handle it. So as much as they do right and they've looked good tonight, those corners have really been letting them down. Kind of see if you're nearly an opportunity. Defender stepped in front of her shot. Now on a counter, here comes the Panthers. Centering pass, though, that's off the mark, off the foot of Ida Hageman, and the Titans will send that out of harm's way. Bree Douglas hustling over to get it. I think they're going to call offside. She may have come from an offside position to receive that ball, I think is what will be the call here. We'll say she was behind the last defender and then came up the field to receive that. Pretty good contingent from Ottawa Glendorf on hand tonight, as you would expect. Titan Faithful travels well. And Manchester as well. I saw when, you know, just trying to look some things up for today's game, looking into Manchester. Uh, checked them out on X. They had a completely full spirit bus that they brought over here yeah. to Shelby as well. So a lot of fans on both sides make these games feel even bigger. Well, it's a penalty and a kick for the Titans. That one's quickly sent back down the field by Brinkman. And that one, though, not to anyone in particular. That one's going to drift almost out of bounds. They'll pick it up way back, but no Titan pressure here. Long lob down the field. And while there is certainly a lot of game left in this one, you have to wonder how many risks the Titans want to take in a long situation like that. It's creating too much space in between your forwards and midfielders and everything. That's probably why they didn't send a whole lot of people forward on that ball that just seemed to roll forever. Bree Douglas going to get a break. Coming back into the game, Delaney Dooling for Ottawa Glandorf. Dooling scored in the regional final against Eastwood. Seifker able to battle and win that ball, but unable to find anything in distribution. Only one will glad we'll keep it over there. We don't have the official possession numbers, but uh, I would have the Titans at about 60-40 at this point in the game. Yeah, and even the possession time that Manchester has, it's been relatively short. Ottawa Glendorf has done a really nice job of controlling things, and especially when they have a chance like this where they get down here and they're able to throw more numbers. They just seem more active on this side of the field. Indeed they do. Drop back to the defense for the Titans. Working it over to the left side where they find Liv Grothaus. Roadhouse trying to work around the defender for Manchester. And the Titans will put it out of play. Actually, the last one off of a white jersey. And the officials will say it is a blue throw, but uh, you got to go back a little bit before you do that. Yeah, man, we have another substitution coming in as well out of Glendorf. Substituting a lot here, you know, as we've under 30 to go in this 20. Between 20 and 30 minutes, they like to get extra in legs in there, trying to get their girls a little bit of rest. And it helps when you have the deep bench that the Titans do. Indeed it does. There's a left foot. That one got a little high, and that one will get out of bounds. Shot off the mark, but unofficially have the Titans for three total shots, two on goal. Or excuse me, four total shots, two on goal, one that made it through the back of the net. One shot on goal so far for Manchester tonight. Maya, Maya Herringhouse coming back into the game for Ottawa Glandorf as they continue with the quick substitutions. Play it out to the far side. Ball initially deflected off of a couple of players battling for possession. Trying to work it to McKenna Siefker. Centering pass. Panthers trying to switch field. Now they'll pass it forward. That one. Inadvertently bounced up, hit Kate Norris, their leading scorer's hand. No call on it. They play on, and Titans will get possession back momentarily. In case the officials didn't see it, they could have just looked over here to the OG faithful <laughs> because I think everybody <laughs> in the stands threw their hands up on that one. You know, right now, both teams just trying to find a way to get some possession here in the midfield area. Panthers play it forward to Norris. 
Norris, the rare field player you'll see wearing number one. That was usually a goalie number, but Dykes will want to keep her in check. She's a great scorer for this Panther team. There's the throw. Keep it on the far sideline. Centering pass. Erford going to trace that one down and take away any opportunity that the Panthers might have. Nice decision by Erford that time. Didn't want to let that one travel any farther than necessary. Comes out and gets that one. And able to get her punt up and around right on midfield. Right foot away. Struggling to control that one was Delaney Dooling, but the Titans going to get it back as Micah Aldridge gets the takeaway. Nice cut back to her left. Pass through the middle. Nice move to her right now by Wrecker. Wrecker sends it out right side. There's the pass across the middle, and it is going to be taken away by the keeper and Jaden McKinney. Good attack, though, by the Titans. Yeah, it all started with the foot skills of Micah Aldrich right around midfield. Got that run and that opportunity. But hats off uh, that time to Jaden McKinney. You know, we've already mentioned about how she's starting her first game since early October. Got some time in that regional final, but not their regular goalie. You know, and as that ball starts coming down, you start seeing it and thinking about it. You know they're going to have a clear shot. You just got to stand tall. She did a nice job of getting a good angle on it and picking up the save. Well, as you mentioned, she's no stranger to pressure situations. A state champion wrestler. She knows how to step up in a big situation. It's just the, uh, that's not a good clearance by the Titans. But the Panthers aren't able to find a shot out of it. And that is an opportunity lost there. That ball hung out there way longer than the Titan defense would have liked to have seen. But a long lob back down the field. The Titans will send it back. Aldrich couldn't quite corral it. But neither could the Panthers. Titans will have a throw in right in front of their own bench. They'll bring a couple of subs back in. Bree Douglas re-enters the game as does Liv Grothaus. And I think it's another missed opportunity that time for Ottawa Glendorf. I think there there is a big a big advantage for Ottawa Glendorf in that midfield, especially with Mike Aldrich. She just seems to be more physical, quicker. Her foot skills are, are just seem to be better tonight than anybody that's been guarding her. So when they can find some space for her like that, you'd love for her to be able to fight for that one a little bit more as we have some contact over on that sideline. But no whistle as... Titan fans not happy. I don't think the players are happy, but play will continue. It did look like some contact after the ball got away. Yeah, Seifker went down, but looks like she's okay. Came with that to that ball with a vengeance, too. So perhaps a little fired up after that contact. There's past the right side. Titans trying to close the gap, but that's a nice defensive takeaway. Over on the left side for the Panthers. Stepping up. And momentarily sending it away. Center back for the Titan defense. Pass down the sideline, trying to give chase to that one is Hageman. Hageman, though, pursued and sends it towards the box. Initially sent away by the Titans. Hageman sends another one in. This towards the top of the goal box. Titan defense knocks the first one away, not the second. Diving save going to be made by Carson Erford. Kate Norris got a great look, but an even better look from the keeper than Carson Erford to come up with that save. That's why you hate to see those if you're out of a gland of court to go towards the center of the box and a deflection in there left a wide open look for Manchester. But what an effort by Erford to just get a hand on that one to knock it out wide. Corner kick will be taken by Craddock. Second corner of the game for the Panthers. Titans again can't get clearance. They'll send it back out to Craddock. Sends it back in. That one's long across the net. Ball headed straight up. I think they're going to get a push off from the back against... Manchester, and that indeed will be the case. He, I, he doesn't look like he's showing a car, but he's having a conversation right now as the official. He's talking with They're talking still, and we'll see as this conversation's going on a lot longer than you would have thought, especially for a card not to come out. But either way, Otto Glendorf's going to get the ball here. But what a missed opportunity for Manchester as they had the corner. And then they had like a modified corner a little bit yeah. closer, got the ball up in the air, but couldn't cash it in. Nice job by the Otto Glendorf defense to turn them away. Titans hanging on to this 1-0 lead under 17 minutes remaining in this first half of action. And a little bit of space to operate in midfield. Could not connect on the pass to the outside, but it'll be a Titan throw in. It'll be made by Liv Grothaus. 
a nice left foot to keep it in play from Delaney Dooling and then sent back out of play. Dooling's going to take the throw in here. She wants to go quick. Gets it to Seifker in the, near the left corner. Okay. Seifker, a little ambitious there. Yeah, Seifker, a little bit too much power on that one. Ottawa Glendorf was trying to take advantage of that Manchester defense. Looking like they were a little slow coming down, maybe getting a little bit tired. You know, we, we talked about, you know, one of the downsides of being when you have a dominant team and you, you tend to play teams that you are just you're just better than there are years where you're just going to be head and shoulders better than a lot of teams that you play. You don't always get pushed. You're not yeah. always playing at the pace that you're used to. And then when you get as you see another save out of Glendorf right now, just peppering the goal. But when you see this kind of pressure and this pace that you're facing, it can wear you down quickly because you're just not used to seeing it. Uh, that's a very good point. The Titans now three shots on goal, six total shots unofficially here this evening against the Manchester Panthers, trying to hand Manchester their first loss of the season and leading 1-0 with 15-27 remaining in the first half on the structure outdoor scoreboard. Nice job flipping the field that time by Manchester as all the blue jerseys were on the other side, so able to get a little bit of space here, but a little indecisive with it in the midfield and allowed Ottawa Glendorf to recover. Aldrich with it. Left foot down the middle of the field. That one a little bit long, and stepping out to kick that one away will be McKinney. Aldrich couldn't bring that down, but the Titans do get possession out of it. Swing it out left side, Dooling. Dooling plays it back and got it to uh, Grothaus, who tried to play it forward. Nothing was there. And the Titans send it out of play, coming up and getting a foot on it. Megan Horseman couldn't keep it in play, but she did keep it away from anybody who could initiate any sort of attack. And we'll get a Manchester substitution on the far side of the field. Yeah, it doesn't look like Manchester has the, the numbers that Ottawa Glandorf does. you got a lot of girls over there on the bench, but they, they seem kind of dressed. They're sitting down. I'm not quite sure if that's... You know, if they're going to go real deep tonight when they're looking for those substitutions, you know, as we were just talking about, if Ottawa Glendorf continues to play at the pace that they're playing right now, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of condition Manchester's in. Carly Brinkman deflected that one out of bounds off of Manchester player. Now Katie Norris got a foot on it, but couldn't keep it in for the Panthers. Another OG throw in coming on the near sideline. Lobbed forward. That one, a little much distance on it for anybody to give chase. McKenna Seifker turned, but... Not going to have a chance. She'll hold back and serve her energy as Jaden McKinney comes up to field it. McKinney, big right foot, gets it toward near midfield. Titan takeaway. That's Bree Douglas. OG's just so, been so much better on those 50 50 balls here tonight. Pass down the sideline. That one deflected. Panthers trying to make something happen. Sent away by the Titan defense. I'm bringing it this side. Titans have some steam. That's a nice diagonal pass. Can they keep it in play, though? It's slowing down, hustling to the ball, and keeping the live set back in. And then away as Liv Grothaus was trying to chase that one down. Pardon me. I think that was dueling. Titans get it right back to dueling, but dueling, unfortunately, had been pushed so up far up the field on the initial attack that she was unable to reestablish herself on side before the ball came back to her. Yeah, she had a long way to run that time to get to that ball, and I just think she was trying to take a minute there to maybe catch her breath, didn't expect it to come back as quick as it did. So a kick now for the Panthers. Sends it to midfield. Trying to turn. That's a nice play by Emily Hunter. But the Titans send it right back across midfield. Douglas looking to turn the corner, now wants to go back outside. Sends it down the line. That one's going to stay in bounds. Can they keep it in play, though, before it reaches the end line? Yes, they can. Nobody there, though, to able to hammer it home as the ball sent back further. But Douglas comes up with it. Puts the shot, and that one just wide to the left. That looked good coming off of Douglas's foot. Looked like it was going to have the right angle looking for that top left corner, but ends up going a little bit wide as I think the entire OG side held their breath there for a second. I tell you what, I really thought that that one was on frame. As a lot of times you just watch the reaction of the keeper. Sometimes the angle up here is a little bit new. If the keeper doesn't react, then it's not going in even so. Sometimes the angle looks like it. Jaden McKinney reacted like that was going into that upper corner and uh, it just missed wide to the right. Micah Aldridge going to put one in. That one just over the top of the crossbar. I think maybe it deflected off of a defender on her initial shot. 
Had a lot of uh, pop-up coming up. Actually, no, it did not touch a defender as it will be a goal kick coming up. But that is now the eighth shot tonight for the Titans. Three of those have been on goal. Of course, one has made it into the back of the net. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I agreed with you. I thought for sure that that had gone off of a Manchester player coming off of and Aldrich's foot. Ball. Yeah, but just a weird angle coming off of, of our foot. But right now, you kind of see that Ottawa Glandorf is comfortable shooting. Once they get inside the 20, they're, they're fine with letting them go and, and trying to see if they can't uh, get – uh, a nice shot on and, and make McKenna have to make some plays back there. But McKinney so far has been okay outside of the one goal that she's given up here. Now, that one was definitely not on hers. The Titans had numbers. She did everything she could do to take away that initial shot, but the pass across the net was nobody. There was a person on mark, that person being McKenna Seeker, who put it in for the one goal that we have on the board here in the first half. Aldrich trying to turn, has it taken away. That's Norris. Norris passes to the left sideline. That's going to be too far out in front of the intended target, and it'll be a throw-in for the Titans who take it quickly. They don't wait a whole lot to uh, get that ball back in play. They want to go. OG's going to get it back at midfield with the takeaway. We're going to turn on the Jets. Nobody on the left sideline to go to. And running the uh, player up the ball, that was Kerry Clark for Manchester, slowing that one up. The Titans quickly back to it. Bree Douglas now on the left side, cuts it back to her right. A shot, possibly a pass coming. She's going to take the shot. That one is going to be wide to the right, and that'll bring in a Manchester sub in the meantime. And Douglas had a nice look at it. We saw that lane open up from over here, and if she was able to get that one to turn just a little bit more, she was going hunting for that back corner as well. So Ottawa Glendorf getting opportunities and looks here, and it just kind of feels like it's only a matter of time before some of these start going in. And they've completely dominated possession here the last five minutes of this contest. 9.35 separating us from the half with Ottawa Glendorf up 1-0 on the structure outdoor scoreboard. See if you had it popped away from her. Because I'll tell you what, if Manchester is able to hang tough here in this final 10 minutes and they can keep Ottawa Glandorf off the scoreboard, even if maybe they can get one in themselves, but if they go in at halftime tied at one or just down one nothing, you got to think that they should be feeling very good about themselves with the kind of pressure they're seeing from the Titan offense. Big break there for Ottawa Glandorf as it looked like the pressure had looked like Manchester had the Titans on their heels a little bit. And a misplayed ball sent it back out of play and gave the Titans a throw and a chance to get the defense back. Aldrich to send that one towards the middle of the field with the long lob. Ottawa Glendorf send one player at it. Backing up to retrieve that one is Grothaus. Grothaus gave chase but could not keep it in the possession of the Titans with under nine minutes remaining. It's a nice cut back to the middle. The Titans couldn't get clearance, bounced off a couple of players, but harmlessly back to Horseman who sends it upfield. Diagonal pass left side looking for Bree Douglas. Douglas won't be able to get there first, but can she create some uh, havoc as the pass goes outside on the left uh, for the Panthers? It's a nice series of passes in their defensive third by, by Manchester as Ida Hageman sends it forward. That's a very controlled defensive there. No panic. And that's a place where you can turn the ball over and put yourself into uh, some bad news. Titans nearly had something going there. Mackenzie Recker looked like she got bumped from behind, but kept her footing, and there was no whistle as the Titans send this one out of play. Yeah, that, that last offensive play for Ottawa Glandorf, you know, Bree Douglas had to get down there in a hurry. When she got down there, though, she was able to cover a lot of ground, and it was just one on four Manchester players. Manchester, though, like you said, they did a nice job not panicking, not allowing anything to go uh, long off of their foot. They had good touches, because if so, Douglas was right there to, make, to try to make them pay for those mistakes. So good poise shown that time as Manchester now trying to get something going on their offensive third before halftime. They got a bounce that they would have liked, but they didn't have anybody who could follow it. And Carson Erford calls for the ball. She'll have a chance to punt this one back down the field. Brought down, though, by the Panthers. Titans will quickly sweep it out of there and send it back down the field. Centering pass to Clark. Clark sends it forward. And now, once again, a couple of times Manchester's been on the move, and they just haven't been able to really corral the pass that lets them turn the corner and move back towards the goal. Nothing thing just like that happened to them right there. 
Able to keep that one in play, though. Yeah, nice job playing that one off the foot on that far sideline. I thought for sure that one was destined to be heading out. Trying to play it up to Katie Norris from Clark. Titans get it back. Can they get the give and go to Aldridge? Aldridge got the first touch, second touch a little bit long. She'll give chase. That's going to force the Panthers to send it out of play. And I think this might be where you see the inexperience of the keeper there, Jaden McKinney. Is a lot of times you don't mind your defense dropping it back to a keeper in a pressure situation like that. And then let the keeper see the field and distribute it whichever way they want to go. That time they just send it out of play and it'll be a throw in now for the Titans. Yeah, and you, don't, you didn't see her come out. A lot of times you'll see the keepers come out. They'll start calling, you know, for their defenders to drop it back to them. And it didn't look like any of that kind of communication was going on. And as a result, the Titans will keep it on the attack. Trying to turn the corner on the right side. Oh, they got a great position. Centering pass is sent out of play by Clark. Or pardon me, that'll be Ida Hagman who sent that out, and it will be another quarter coming up for the Titans. This will be their fourth. Nate, this is where you said that the Titans can stand and maybe some improvement. We'll see if they get it here. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Manchester's fortunate that Hagman was there because if not, that was going right to the Titans. They had several different players right there. They've not looked good on these corners, but they'd love to cash one in here. That one floats. Good defensive header to initially send it away. Ball bounces loose in the box, and that one will go out of play. It'll be a goal kick coming up now for Manchester with just over five remaining in the first half. Man, that's another one, though, when you look back at McKinney and, and back there. and you, know, you gotta give her a lot of credit. We know she's coming in, and this isn't you know, the regular spot for her, but you just don't see her very active back there. Even on that one coming in, didn't seem to be closing out on it. She was just kind of watching it go out a as well. Throw in coming up for Manchester once again over on the far sideline. Ball volleyed forward, but the Titans get ahead on it and get it to Aldrich. Aldrich cuts it back to her right. Now a lob forward. Trying to find McKenna Siefker. Wasn't quite there. Aldrich gets it back, though. Aldrich, we know she'll take a shot from here. She will take the shot, and that one is saved by McKinney. That one would have found the back of the net as it was coming down, and McKinney makes a huge save. What a great job by McKinney. We were being a little critical of some of the things and just we, the inexperience from back there and some of the miscues that maybe she had done. But I'll tell you what, that was a great job. Great job timing that one. Great job getting a hand on that one. And she didn't punch it so it would go out either. Right. She kept it in play so it didn't result in a corner and now Manchester with a chance on their offensive side. They'll take it down to the left corner following the throw. That's deflected by the Titans. To the top of the box, Norris got her head on it, but a diving save by Erford again. Carson Erford has made a couple of diving saves. That's the third shot on goal from Manchester. Manchester hasn't had many opportunities, but all three of their shots have been on frame. Carson Erford with three saves to her credit here as we get into the closing minutes of the first half. Titans up 1-0. The Panthers trying to do something about it. That ball's going to roll out of bounds. Titans just put it away. As it was going to be off of them anyway. Just lets the defense get reset. Norris the throw. Headed away, but Norris able to get back to it. Goes to her left. She'll take the left-footed shot. Titans can't get clearance. They're going to send this one out of play. This is one thing that Coach uh, Michelle Mag might talk about at the half is the defensive clearance is usually coming off that second touch, not the first one. And that was a not, not a great first touch either as it went the opposite direction. So OG was fortunate to be able to play that one out. Now they're able to get it out of harm's way momentarily. They'll get a throw in, 242. Boy, a goal either way in these closing minutes would do a lot for momentum in the second half. Fisher's going to let him play on that contact as McKenna Seifker hit the deck. There's a pass over to the left side. Manchester has some attacking of momentum right now. And Abel Glendorf going to be able to send that one out of play. Now, this is by far the longest length of time that they spend on their offensive third. Just love to get themselves a few more opportunities. As Carson Erford has played really well, they'd love to try to challenge her. Pass over to the right side. Now sent forward, nothing harmful there as that one rolls right into the hands of Carson Erford with under two minutes remaining in the half. It's been the Panthers threatening here the last couple of minutes of this contest. And they'll take that one out of the air. Chipped away by Horseman. 
Titans trying to turn and go. That's a good pass. They can keep it in play, hustling to it. Delaney Dueling, Dueling turns the corner. Dueling sends it across the middle of the net. Didn't quite get as much on that pass, perhaps, as she wanted, and it's deterred by the defense. Stepping up, though, the Titans defense. Micah Aldrich is dropping, pardon me, that's uh, Madeline Hovist who sent that one forward. That's a huge shot, finds the back of the net. What a laser off the foot of Delaney Dueling, who scores in her second consecutive game. And Ottawa Glandorf makes it 2-0 with a minute 14 remaining in half number one. We are back on WOSN right after this. Welcome back to Shelby here on WOSN and on the Structure Outdoor Scoreboard. It's another Titan goal. 2-0 Delaney Dooling, just an absolute rocket off the left foot and over the outstretched hands of Jaden McKitty to make this game 2-0. That goal, the service of Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima as the Titans get clearance there. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Nate, let's go back to that goal. You gotta like how the Titans bend, don't break on the defensive end, finally get some pressure and they're able to put in a huge one. Yeah, we've seen them here for the, about the last like 20, 25 minutes here of this first half really start letting the ball fly. Once they get inside that 20, they have not minded taking those long range shots. And McKinney had been doing a nice job of tracking those and sent a couple of close ones out, but Delaney dueling, I mean, an absolute laser from that corner, it was a difficult ball and it just got over the outstretched arms of McKinney. What a beautiful shot and a second goal here towards the end of this first half. We talked about it, you know, tied 1-1, you know, one nothing going into halftime, the mood in that locker room, but 2 nothing really puts Manchester on their heels. Yes, it does, and that is going to do it for the first half. We've played 40 minutes here in Shelby, Ottawa Glendorf. Up to nothing on the structure outdoor scoreboard. We'll be back with second half action after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Shelby High School. Doug Jenkins and Nate Garlock with you here on WOSN. It's the Division III State Semifinal in girls high school soccer. Ottawa Glendorf taking on the Manchester Panthers and the Titans have a 2-0 lead after 40 minutes of play. Nate, you look at how the Titans set up that first 40 minutes. Your thoughts? Well, I think you, when you look at it as a whole, it was a lot of domination by Ottawa Glendorf. They really controlled things right from the outset, had lots of opportunities on offense in front of the net. We saw them start pulling it out and taking those deep shots. One of those finally fell in there right towards the end of that first half. But if you're Manchester on the other side, yes, you, you have a deficit now. You're down two. That's a big hole in a state semifinal. But even though they didn't have a ton of opportunities, they did get three very good looks at goal against Carson Erford, yeah. and they're still in this. They know how to score. We know that by looking at what they've done this year. This is not a team that has no idea how to get shots up. So they're just going to have to start being more aggressive, though. At some point, they're going to have to start taking a few more chances. But if they get those looks, they can put it in the net. Yes, they can. And the Titans, though, they're going to get a left foot shot on goal. That one deflects up the keeper, and the Titans are there to hammer home the rebound. That's McKenna Seifker with her second goal of the game. And that was one of the things that we did not see Ottawa Glendorf do very well in the first half, and that was following shots. We did not see a lot of rebound opportunities and chases, and right there, they did a great job. They were there for the putback in an easy goal to make this a three-goal lead. We're back with more from Shelby after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Shelby. We're only 27 seconds into the second half. Ottawa Glendorf has put home their third goal of the night. McKenna Seeker, the rebound off the keeper and Jaden McKinney. And the Titans now lead 3-0. Like you said, Nate, we hadn't seen the Titans being able to get one of those rebound-type shots on goal in that entire first half. But they were able to capitalize off the defensive miscue there. 
And we talked about at some point Manchester was going to have to go ahead and take a few more chances. And I don't think they wanted it to be this early in the second half, but down three, they're going to have to do that. They continue, continue to play their game, but Otto Glandorf with another opportunity. Great setup pass to Bree Douglas. Douglas takes it towards the touchline, crossing pass is sent right back towards Douglas. She'll set it back down, trying to get to her left foot. Drops it back. That one set in and a low bouncer off the foot of Mackenzie Wrecker. That one is saved by Jaden McKinney. Sixth shots on goal tonight for Ottawa Glandorf. And I think that's the way when you're going to take a shot from that deep against the keeper who hasn't seen a whole lot of time. If you can put that low line drive, make it bounce in an odd spot right in front of their ankles, that is a tough one to deal with. McKinney did a nice job there. Yeah, and even though she fell on that one, that's still starting to get through a little bit of the space. You saw it move. So it was a good opportunity again by Ottawa Glandorf as they continue to put the pressure on offense here. When people see this, they will know who Ottawa Glendorf is playing on WOSN. As we're covering this live, it does look like it will be a rematch with Cincinnati Country Day should the scores hold. We're going to get push on the Titans there, and it will be Manchester going back the other way. Alex Harrison from the Enquirer reporting that uh, right now Country Day was up 2-0 on Madeira at the half. That's the other side of this bracket. And early reports have it as well that if Ottawa Glendorf can hold on, WSN, we're going to be down there bringing you the state championship game on Friday night. Indeed, as Bree Douglas tries to work it back towards the middle of the field. Sends it forward. That one, though, nobody home. It'll go out of play, and a goal kick coming up for the Panthers once again. You gotta think the Panthers only giving up eight goals coming into this game on the season. The Titans have nearly accumulated half that amount here and just over 46 minutes of, or excuse me, of 42 minutes of play. I tried to do math in my head again, Nate. It did not <laughs> work well. Ball to the left side, Grace Souls. Will be headed forward by Savannah Wrecker. Through ball, trying to get it to uh, Bree Douglas. Mike Aldridge sent it that way, and the Panthers just going to send that out of play. Didn't really look for a pass. That lets the Titans continue their attack. Steve Kerr trying to get back to her right, pops it out towards the middle of the field, and there's clearance by the Panther defense. That one hung out in front of the goal box far too long for Coach Eddie Kisner's comfort. Yeah, Manchester fortunate Ottawa Glendorf didn't get a shot off on that one as they were trying to frame it up right in front and a little bit of a bad touch off of that second one. And fortunate that they were able to get that one away. Ray Douglas working with the ball. Great ball handling there. She was pressured by Meyer Shaver. And that speed of Bree Douglas has really been a difference maker here tonight as she has constantly been able to chase, get to space. And I think that's why we saw Manchester on that last time down just kick it out of bounds because they knew she was coming. They don't have time to slow things up and try to get a good foot on it because if they do, she's right there. And now the Panthers putting on some pressure. Souls sets it down, but nobody home in the middle of the field. Well, it's Mike Aldrich to send it to her left. That ball off the mark finds the foot of Ella Craddock. Titans send it back to midfield. Going to the right side, looking for Douglas. Nice job getting in the way of that one, though, by Maya Shaber. And the Panthers look to work it back into their attacking half. They want to find the left side with a Lauren uh, Gunsett. Gunsett had it pried away from her, but gives chase. Able to keep possession. She's looking for somebody to move. Not a lot of movement off the ball for her to find anyone to distribute to. Yeah, and it looks like with this defense of Ottawa Glandorf right now, they're doing a nice job in space and coverage. No matter where Manchester goes, there's at least two to three OG defenders that are super close to them, and that's really clogging things up and not allowing them to get any good looks. Ball is lobbed towards the goal box on the left side. In 3 0 Ottawa Glendorf. There's a, that's a nice left foot. That one had more on it than I thought it did. Off the foot of uh, Lauren Gunsett. And Carson Herford had to come forward and make a nice play on it and prevent that. It was a pass across the net, but there was somebody waiting on it. Yeah, great decision by Herford that time. She didn't sit back to wait to see what happened. She came out, cut that one off, and prevented Manchester from having an opportunity. Mike Aldridge splits a couple of defenders. Her forward pass is deflected, and Seifker is able to get there. Seifker for the hat trick. McKenna Seifker, her third goal of the evening, off the deflection. 
And the Titans are rolling up 4-0, 34-29 remaining in the second half. Ottawa Glendorf is now tallying half the amount of goals that Manchester has allowed on the entire season. We'll take a time out. We'll discuss that one further coming up on WOSN. Welcome back to Shelby, where Ottawa Glendorf really asserting themselves. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Nate Garlock on the Structure Outdoor Scoreboard. It is now 4-0 in favor of Ottawa Glendorf. McKenna Siefker, her third goal of the evening, and the Titans are up 4-0 in the state semifinal matchup against the Manchester Panthers, and they just continue to work downhill right now. Yeah, they do. It was a nice job by the OG offense that time. Jaden McKinney took a little bit too long to come out of the net when she finally decided decided to McKenna was right there for the quick redirect off the right foot uh, right now that OG offense just has everything going the pressure and the pace that they're playing at and we talked about it a little bit in the first half and I, I just think that the pace that they are seeing out of Ottawa Glandorf is just not something that they have seen this season and it's really caught them off guard it, it you know no matter how, what you do in practice and, and no matter what you see if you haven't seen what Ottawa Glendorf is throwing him. And you haven't had to play at this pace for lengths of time in games. You're just not going to be able to replicate it. And I think we're seeing that tonight. I think you're absolutely right on that. So that last goal, the service of Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. They're in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Ottawa Glendorf off and running here in the early parts of the second half. Scoring two goals in the first six minutes. McKenna Seifer on both of them. The Titans have had three shots on goal already this half. Two of them finding the back of the net. It's about seven total shots on goal for the Titans thus far this evening. And there's a nice pass out to the right side. Doolin, can she keep it in play? That one just got away from her. Pardon me. That's uh, Emma Herringhouse. I think Herringhouse saw that green in front of her and got a little bit excited. And what you're seeing is just the spacing for the Titans right now is just e exceptional. They're not getting clogged up. Manchester's doing a little bit of chasing, and that's really freeing Ottawa Glandorf, Glandorf up to be able to move the ball efficiently, and that's what's giving them such good looks. And a substitution for Ottawa Glandorf and for Manchester for the Titans. They'll bring Delaney Dooling back in. That'll give Bree Douglas a breather. Just continue to be impressed at the aggressive attack of Ottawa Glendorf. But not only the aggressiveness, it's a very skilled aggressive attack, and that is a very dangerous combination. As Manchester looks to get out of harm's way, they find their leading scorer in Katie Norris. Norris sends the ball forward. Titans trying to find the loose ball at midfield. Norris is the first one to it for the Panthers. Ball sent forward. Stolen away, though, by the Titans. Momentarily, anyway. Works the way over to Rowan Oshemwitz. And now the Titans battle for possession. Herringhouse tried to play it forward to McKen uh, Mackenzie Record. But what you're seeing out of Glendorf is they're never letting Manchester have any space. The moment that a ball goes to somebody, even if there's no Titan anywhere close, someone is pulling off and they are running to the ball. They are constantly putting pressure on Manchester. They don't have any time to try to sit, look at the field, and see where they want to go. Looking for a cross, perhaps another goal at time. Not initially a shot. There's the left footer. That one's going to go high and over the crossbar. It's the first shot for Ottawa Glendorf here in the second half that hasn't been in between the posts. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. So they can miss. <laughs> <laughs> so far here, at least in the second half, it hasn't looked like that was going to be something that happened and a little bit too much power, but they're still getting looks. They're still having open lanes. You know, the, we saw them finish at the net on these last two goals, but there they go right again, trying to send it from distance. Bree Douglas re-enters the game. And a goal kick here for Manchester. It's directly to Micah Aldrich. Douglas wants to go back to Aldrich over on the far side of the field. Some nifty footwork and sends that one in on that. That one 
bounced off the keeper. Did it go out of bounds? Yes, it did. And it will be another quarter kick for the Titans. Their first of this half, but their fifth of the game. What an accurate kick by Aldridge that time. She was she was a good distance away when she turned to let that one go and put it right on that front corner post. And McKinney had no choice but to try to knock that one out. Otto Glando for another corner opportunity. Corner from the far side. That one hangs up there. Couldn't get a head on it. It bounces in the goal box. Still not clear. Seifker got a foot on it, but unable to send it in. Aldrich wanted to put the hammer down on it. Couldn't quite get it there. And now it'll be sent out of play by the Panther defense as Mackenzie Recker was giving chase. Go right back to her. And the ball sent back towards midfield. Playing up high to get that is Horseman. Horseman sends it right through the middle of the field. It was deflected right back to her. Well, that's good footwork out there by Carly Brinkman, I believe. And it keeps it in the Titans' possession as Horseman plays it up the field. Douglas wanted to turn the corner, had it pried away from her. And a nice move to get it back. Going the other direction, but the Titans immediately take it away. Just back to your point, Nate. They're in the passing lanes. They're constantly moving. That's going to be offside on Otto and Glendorf there. Yeah, I think we're going to have a yellow as that whistle came, and she still sent that one in. And yeah, they right. are. Once the whistle blows, you have to stop play right away, and she did not. She sent that one in. So it looks like no yellow, but they did stop the clock to talk to her about that. That's as interesting. Yeah, that, usually that's an almost an automatic yellow, especially when you reach this part of the, the tournament. Usually the officials aren't nearly as forgiving. No. You know, it's a little bit, they feel like at this point, you, know, you should know the rules, and they're a little bit more strict about those things. Well, being a 4 nothing lead for Ottawa Glendorf, Seifker not going to have to play as aggressive as she normally would, but if she picks up a card there, then that really takes her out of really attacking the ball and getting an inadvertent yellow because if you get the yellow now in Ohio, you're suspended the next game or two games, actually. It doesn't matter at this point because there's only one left to play after this, but she would be unavailable in a situation like that. Very fortunate not to get that card there and even bring that into play. Yeah, my guess is if we would have seen Seifker pick up that yellow, she immediately would have been heading to the sidelines and we probably would not have seen her back out there tonight. Yeah, she'd have been on a short leash, that's for sure. But play will continue as normal here. Seifker sets it down. That's a nice pass out to the left side. Douglas sprinting forward to get to it. The defense, though, able to get there first as Bull sends it out of play. Throw in coming up, Titans. Ottawa Glendorf tonight just clearly has a speed advantage on this Manchester team. As you saw, Bree cover about 15 more yards than the Manchester defense that time to get to that one and force them to kick that one out. And a long run across the field as coming back into the game was Delaney Dueling. She'll take the throw here. There's the throw set down. The time two players on it. The chip to the top of the box, headed away momentarily. That one is deflected. And finally deflected off of a Titan out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick coming up once again for Manchester. And with that, let's take a quick break. Back with more action from Shelby right after this. Back here in Shelby on WSN, Doug Jenkins and Nate Garlock for girls high school soccer. It's the Division Three state semifinal. Ottawa Glendorf leading the Panthers of Manchester by a score of 4-0. A state semifinal rematch from a year ago, a game of which the Titans won 2-0. Right now they are double that margin. It might have been a handball. Looked like it bounced up, hit the hand of the Titan player there, McKenna Seifker, and it will be a free kick coming up for Manchester. Uh, not a whole lot of whistles here tonight, but that time Ottawa Glandorf bitten by it, just inadvertent as it got up on that handball. So Manchester with an opportunity to finally get this one out of their offensive side of the field and maybe try to get something going. Ball sent over to the left side to uh, Shaber. Well, Manchester down 4 nothing. certainly a situation they had not envisioned nor have they faced this entire year. 
That ball sent out of play. We're going to stop. I think he stopped the clock here. And that is a card. And that's going to be issued to the Manchester defender there. Really rode the Titan player out of bounds after the ball had gotten away from both of them. Yeah, trying to get after it. And you saw Manchester. I'm sure there's some frustration yep. coming out in that one as well. As, as you mentioned, this is not a position that they have found themselves in at all this season. Yeah, but Nate, like we were talking about at the beginning of the half before the Titans put two on quickly. If Manchester can just get some looks. They're accurate with their shots. Carson Erford's had a great game with three saves and those coming in the first half. But right now, Manchester can't even threaten. And I think, you know, we talked about how good both of these defenses are. And obviously that OG offense tonight has just been a little bit better. But, you know, OG's defense only given up six goals so far. I, I believe they've been perfect so far here in the tournament play as well. Yeah. And, you know, it's and you can see why. I mean, they they are able to throw defenders at you at every angle. And when they do get behind you, there's Erford for the nice saves. That's a big shot, and that is hauled in by Carson Erford. Again, another shot on Fred. That's Katie Norris leading scorer for the Panthers. He uncorked that one. Four shots tonight. All have been on goal. Four saves for Carson Erford of Ottawa Glendorf. You know, Erford didn't panic that time. That one was coming from distance. Sometimes keepers can get a little bit of happy feet as they want to make sure that they judge that one right and doesn't get behind them. But she did a nice job of standing tall and picking up another save. Mike Aldrich, footwork on display here the last couple of minutes of this half. That pass, though, off the mark, but it deflects right back to the Titans. They'll go out wide right side to Herringhouse. Maya Herringhouse looking for the cross. That one is sent out of bounds. Corner kick coming up Ottawa Glendorf. It'll be their sixth corner kick of the evening. And now the Titans get a couple of subs on as they bring Emma Herringhouse back in, as well as Liv Grothaus. Corner kick will come from the near side. There's the left foot into it, and that one got through. Titans could not find the back of the net. The defender standing in the back corner able to send that one away. First time all night we've really seen Ottawa Glandorf have an opportunity coming off of a corner. Manchester did a nice job, though, making sure they sent that one out. And Ottawa Glandorf wasting no time getting right back on the attack. Well, what a centering pass by Douglas. It is headed on goal, but sliding over to get it is Jaden McKinney. These Titans, they are just relentless. They are constantly throwing pressure out you. The speed that they have tonight. I'll tell you what, they continue to play like this. It's going to be a great matchup Friday night. Yes, it will be. And that one will roll harmlessly out of bounds. But again, it was the Titans moving downhill. Well, it's a parallel universe over in Cincinnati where Country Day leads Madeira 4 0 that game with 27 minutes remaining. So. Anything you can do, I can do better, I suppose, on the scoreboard tonight <laughs> as the teams who look like they're heading towards the state championship rematch matching goals against their opponents tonight. Didn't quite get the touch on that that you wanted at Emma Herringhouse. That'll go into the side netting, and it will be a goal kick once again for the Panthers. Nearing the midway point of the second half. And we're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. Only $8 per month. You can watch WOSN from anywhere, anytime. Sign up at app.wosn.tv. It's also available on Roku and Apple TV. A great way to keep up with sports from all across West Central and Northwest Ohio. And it would appear that Northwest Ohio is heading to Central Ohio in just a matter of days right now, Nate. Yeah, well rep represented once again. You know, this Ottawa Glendorf Titan team, you know, barring a big comeback here, they're going to have an opportunity to go and avenge that loss last season to that Cincinnati Country Day team. And, you know, I had an opportunity to see Ottawa Glendorf last year, and they looked very good. They, they seemed like a dominant team. They had a lot of talent. And I, I it's hard for me to believe, but I, I believe that this team is better. Yeah. 
I mean, as, as talented and as good as they were last year, this seems like a better squad than what they had last year. Kate Norris on the attack. Looks like she might lay it off to the right side, and she does. As she has Grace Souls working down the right sideline. Centering pass hangs out there for a moment, but the Titans are able to send that one away. Nicely set down over on the far side of the field. Bree Douglas just hammers it off of a Manchester player and out of bounds. It'll be a throw in coming up now for the Titans. Well, it's one thing to be good. It's one thing to be aggressive. It's one thing to be good and aggressive and also on a mission. And that appears to be what this Lady Titan team is. Yeah, I think that that is definitely the mantra and it's, and it's finished the job. And they know that they left some things on the field last year. They, you know, as, as great as it is to play in a state final, it, it's that much worse to lose that state final. And they, they want to go back and they want to reverse that feeling. 20 minutes away from doing so here in Shelby tonight. Centering pass, though. Manchester not the done yet. Side. There's Norris. Norris cuts it back to her right, puts the shot up, and that one will find the back of the net. And there goes the clean sheet streak. Norris might have put that one off the side, might have deflected, but regardless, it will be a Manchester goal as Katie Norris finds the back of the net for the Manchester Panthers. We'll take a timeout. Back with more on WOSM. Welcome back to Shelby, where the Manchester Panthers still have a little fight in them there, Nate. Doug Jenkins, Nate Garlock with you here on WOSN. Katie Norris finds the back of the net to make it a 4-1 ball game. And the Panthers on the board for the first time tonight. Yeah, we talked about how this offense and their prolific scoring offense, they just needed opportunities. Norris had one there, did a great job. Thought she might have made a mistake early when it looked like she had an opening on that outside with the left foot. And now the Titans have a chance, looking for Seifker again, got behind her, trying to step around two defenders, and there's the clearance for Manchester. And the Titans miss an opportunity to put this one back at four. They yeah, did, but just to finish that thought, Norris did a great job reversing her, her, um, reversing her footing, getting back, and had a, a nice job on that outside post. And Then what I loved after that, though, is she ran into the net, grabbed the ball, sprinted back up to the midfield. She did not want to waste any time. She's trying to keep life in her team, letting them know that they're not out of this one yet. Ball set out of play by Megan Horseman. It'll be a Manchester throw-in. Trailing now by three goals with 18.44 remaining. And they get another one quickly here, and suddenly we've got ourselves a ball game. Again, Manchester just five shots tonight, but they have all been on net, which they've, is really impressive. Yeah, they've hard all, to do. Yeah, they've been very solid shots. They've, they've been good opportunities. We see Erford have to make um, some very good saves. They haven't all right been into her hands. She's had to make some uh, good adjustments and, and taken some good angles to get those saves. So Manchester knows that they can score. They know the net's open now, and time's working against them, but they're going to keep pushing. And right now on the attack again as it's bumped out of bounds by the Titans. Another Manchester throw and getting deeper into their attacking third here. Horseman trying to launch this one back downfield, and that one bounced off of a teammate and out of bounds. Manchester will have another look at it. Titans looking for clearance. We'll get it there as it sends back to midfield. But Panthers, they know they've got to throw everything they can right now. They have all their players playing beyond the 50 right now, Nate. Uh, we talked about at some point they'd have to take chances, and they've decided this is that opportunity. Throw in on the left side. Finds Olenwitz. Centering pass. Titans can't get to it. There's Norris again. Norris, that's the first shot tonight that the Manchester Panthers have put wide of the net. But a dangerous opportunity nearly given up there by the Titans. Is that was set out there for a good shot opportunity once again for Manchester. Yeah, the last thing that we're going to wants to see is Norris with an open lane. And she was trying to hit that top corner. He saw her put some air into it, but it was just a little bit off the mark. OG just trying to get it back down the field right now, but facing 10 players on their defensive half of the field, having some trouble getting the angles. That deflection, though, will help things out. Center it up and give it to Bowl. Bowl goes back to her right side. Titans get the takeaway. Over to the left sideline to Dooling. 
And that one will be out of play, of course, dueling. The one Titan goal not scored by McKenna Siefker here tonight. Absolute laser off her left foot in the closing minutes of the first half. Battle for possession here in your midfield. And it will be the Panthers to control. Get it outside to the left, all of which gives away. Gets it right back from Norris. Not enough pace on that ball, though, to quite continue the attack, and the Titans will get a takeaway. But they're going to immediately surrender it, stepping in front of that one with Shaber. And they're going to keep it right now as it went back to Craddock. What's the question, Nate, is how much energy has Manchester had to use just in defense in this game? And then how much energy is required to try and mount an effective comeback here? I thought right there in that last sequence, you kind of saw them slowing down just a little bit, trying to get to that ball and move it back upfield. Yeah, they had looked a little bit of sluggish, but I think they had gotten a little bit of life thanks to that goal that had been scored. But not being able to follow up on it quickly, you, know, you think you see them wearing down just a little bit. 15 minutes and change remaining in the half. Bree Douglas fields the ball. Douglas turns up field. Had to wait a moment. Now she sends it down the left sideline, giving chase to keep it in. Delaney Dooling, left foot, top of the goal box. That one looked momentarily like it could have been an own goal situation. The Titans will get a corner kick coming up out of it. It'll be their seventh corner of the evening. Yeah, 0 for 6 on corners. And, you know, if they end up holding on to this one and they do move on to the state finals, you know, it, it's hard to <laughs> look back and, and be upset with anything after, you know, you've won a state semi. But you got to think Coach Mag is not going to be happy with at, at what is now 0 for 6 on corners. We'll see if they're able to cash in here. Bree Douglas to send it in. Puts the right foot on it. And that one deflected initially by the keeper and then hammered in. I think we're going to get an offside call, though. Yeah, we are, as Ottawa Glendorf had floated a little bit too far as the keeper was out. And so that putback is going to be no good. So now 0 for 7. Now their last two corners have looked at least have been better. The, the, yeah. the, they've had opportunities. But 0 for 7 on corners and just an 0 for in general with that many looks, it just cannot happen at this stage. And, you know, Ottawa Glendorf looks like they're going to be in control of this one with 13 minutes left to go. But you got to think that's going to be an area that they're going to work on before Friday. Some set piece work, perhaps, back when they get to Putnam County this week. Pass down the right sideline as they work it to two Wrecker again. Wrecker dispossessed. The Titans will come back up with it. Quick pass out to the left side to Katie Norris. Norris to midfield. Trying to go right back to Norris. That through ball got there. Erford, Erford coming out and uh, Carson Erford able to get to the ball a couple of steps ahead of Katie Norris. That was a really good pass to set that up. Good read there by Carson Erford. Didn't hesitate, any hesitation there. And you might see a shot on goal from Norris who does not miss. Yeah, Norris just needed one more step to put that one in. Carson Erford come out fearlessly to get that one. And I'll tell you what, for a sophomore goalkeeper, she is just fantastic back there. A lot of confidence. And now we battle for possession in midfield. Aldridge comes up with it. Michael Aldridge trying to go to her right. Bounced off the defender, and the Titans just send it forward. I think momentarily that Emma Herringhouse thought she was going to have some support moving forward. Unfortunately, that support had been knocked to the ground in the form of uh, Micah Aldrich. Um, Micah doesn't usually end up on the wrong no. side of those exchanges. I think even she was a little taken back that she ended up on the ground. <laughs> She thought, what just happened? The ball comes out to the near sideline. It will be a Titan throw. And we're now inside 12 minutes remaining in the game. 3-1, Ottawa Glandorf. Or excuse me, 4-1, Ottawa Glandorf. Throw in will come from Mackenzie Recker. We'll give it right back to her. Nice move to the left. Left puts it in. That defensive header 
He's gonna bounce to the Titans. Cross is swallowed up by Jaden McKinney off the foot of Emma Herringhouse. And the Titans are starting to get back on the attack again, Nate. Yeah, you see Herringhouse that time just not quite enough on that one as she tried to put it back towards the middle of the box. Fortunate for Manchester, but after a little bit of a run, we're seeing Ottawa Glendorf take control again. Herringhouse plays it over the left side. Here comes Bree Douglas. Douglas able to get to it first, but was knocked out of bounds. It's going to be another Ottawa Glendorf corner coming up. This will be their eighth of the evening. And again, Manchester very fortunate as McKinney had came way out and then decided last minute that she should probably let that one go back. Fortunately uh, for Manchester, Ottawa Glendorf did not get a clean look at it. But they do have another opportunity here at corner. Delaney Dooling comes in. Here comes the corner kick. This one floats out near the top of the goal box. It's headed towards the back side. Titans maintain possession. Good effort to stay with it with Mackenzie Recker and set back out of play. It's another Titan corner kick. 0 for 8 so far tonight. I mean, a 4-1 win, you know, but, man, if you're a coaching staff, I've been on that sideline, you're frustrated seeing these many, this many opportunities at a set piece not and not be able to put one of those in the net. Yeah, they've really only found one solid shot off of corners so far tonight, but they'll try and amend that here. Douglas, the corner. It's a great ball, but a defensive header will send it out of harm's way as it gets out to Gina Tipton. Tipton sends it away all the way over to the far sideline. It'll roll out of bounds. And that will bring in no, no substitution waiting for Ottawa Glendorf, so no subs at this point. Titans will keep it over on the far sideline. Good pressure. That one's going to roll all the way back down the field out of play. And Manchester will sub on here. Always interesting over the course of any soccer game, particularly at the high school level, but I feel like you see it all the way up. Is Even in a game where Ottawa Glendorf has really controlled the pace and flow of this game, there's always a five, six, seven minute swing where suddenly the team, no matter what the score, the opposing team gets their looks. And you saw Manchester get that. Ottawa Glendorf did a good job to survive it, only surrendering one, surrendering one goal. And now suddenly the team that's been the aggressor the rest of the, or the most of the game is really back in control of the, the pacing of this. You know, and it really is all about momentum. And, you know, I think a big part of that is you get that shot in the arm because things are starting to finally go your way. And if you're Manchester, you finally put that goal in as another goal gets, or another shot gets sent. That's you know, but you use up all of that energy that you had in reserve because you're like, this is our moment, this yeah. is our push. And then when it doesn't come, it just all drains out of you and it's really hard to get your legs going again. Ball headed forward, trying to get to McKenna Ray or Seeker. McKenna Seeker again has the hat trick. That one deflected back at the keeper. And Jaden McKinney had to fall on top of that. And we'll send it back to midfield. Now the Panthers lob one down. Norris kept it in play. Norris takes the shot. Norris, that one fell right into the hands of Carson Erford. Sixth shot on goal tonight by the Panthers. Five saves for Carson Erford. And you can see why Norris has had such success on, as an offensive powerhouse so far this year. She's been right there. She's able to put good balls, especially from a distance. But yeah. Carson Erford has just done a great job of tracking him and making sure she's getting solid grabs. Ball set back across midfield. And we are inside seven and a half remaining in the contest on the Structure scoreboard. Again, tonight's scoreboard sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Panthers try and work it out to the far side. Looking for a centering pass. Deflected and taken away by the Titans. OG bringing some players back, and yeah, that'll be a trip and a Titan kick coming up. Just an out and out impressive performance by Ottawa Glendorf this evening. Now they try and put a lid on it. That one headed back towards midfield. 
Right, still looking to move downfield. They're not necessarily looking to go out to the uh, corner flags. They'd like to do some more damage on their way out of Richland County tonight. Bree Douglas going to the left, centering pass. Finds Aldrich. Aldrich, you know, wants to shoot from that distance, and that time deflected by a Panther defender, but the Titans keep possession. Douglas can be lethal from the outside. Centering pass. Going to be headed away. Titans able to get back to it first. As Delaney Dooling trying to turn the corner, got him back. And now that will be sent away. Yeah, it kind of feels like Manchester playing with a little bit of fire down there. They're yep. letting Bree ha go back towards the middle of the field, trying to cut her off from going wide. And, and you don't, I don't know that you want to get Bree Douglas a whole lot of space. No. She's dropped those off, but she also had the opportunity. If she wanted, she could have taken some shots. And we know she's accurate with those. Norris comes up with the 50-50 ball. Norris. Centering pass over to the right side. Oh, that one got away from uh, Olivia Fowler, or excuse me, Grace Souls. That's one she would have liked to have back, but her teammates do. The Panthers attempt to get something moving here with 5.20 remaining. And as we get a substitution, we'll take a timeout. Back with more from Shelby right after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Shelby. Closing minutes of the second half of this state semifinal contest in girls division three high school soccer, Ottawa Glendorf, leading by a score of four to one against the Manchester Panthers. And looking at a trip to Columbus this Friday night at historic crew stadium, not lower.com field this year as the crew are in the playoffs. I think the Titans don't care if this one's played on a patch of dirt in Delaware, <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> just so long as they're in that last game of this season with a chance to win the state. But now here comes Norris. Norris, nice pass back to the middle. And they look for that extra pass. Perhaps would have been better served with the shot there. And almost a little bit too unselfish that time as it looked like it had an opportunity as they tried to give that extra pass for a better look right in the middle. And with four minutes left to go, if they could have gotten a clean look there, a 4-2 game really does change the, dy the, dy the dynamic. Excuse me here as we come towards the end of this one. Over to the left side. Shaburn trying to send it downfield. Lob forward, there's Norris again. Norris coming in from the left side, next cap back to her right. She fires another shot, but another save by Carson Erford. So it definitely hasn't been for a lack of opportunities tonight by Manchester as they have put a lot of shots on net. Carson Erford has just been there to turn them away every time. Seven shots on goal by my unofficial count. Erford only one getting by her. It's just the seventh goal the Titans have allowed all season. Remember coming into this contest, Mansfield had only allowed eight goals all year. And the Titans have put up four tonight. That's a nice lob into the middle by uh, Norris. But the Titans gonna send that one all the way back downfield. Manchester will have to give chase. Inside three minutes remaining. Left side to Shaver and plays it forward to Grace Souls. Playing forward now for the Panthers. Off the foot of Gina Tipton. It's a left foot trying to get it over to Norris. Norris. Going to go to left side, Norris, that one off the crossbar, off the football crossbar, though, and it will be a goal kick. Just a near miss there. And that time it was off the left foot yeah. of Norris, so she decided to switch it up that time, and, and she shows her power and accuracy with the left and the right just missing an opportunity there. And I was yeah. beginning to think if there was a flaw in her game, it's that she tends to go to her right, and what well, she showed us with a nice move to her left, just missed on that attempt. Sent all the way back downfield as we're now two minutes away from the conclusion of this one. Now the Titans calling the dogs off a little bit as they will not give chase on that one. As this game pretty well at hand, a three goal advantage inside two minutes remaining. 
Yeah, you want you obviously you want to still finish this one strong, but you want to keep it measured. Don't want any kind of freak accidents. You don't want any. Definitely don't want any freak cards here as you're inside two yeah. minutes left to go. That one deflected forward. Herringhouse take off after it, but Jaden McKinney there first. She sends it away. There's the takeaway again by McKenna Seeker. Seeker plays it out to the left. Bree Douglas gets down there for it. Douglas trying to just keep possession for the Titans here. In a more contested situation, you got to feel she'd have fired one off with the left, but the wise play is to keep possession. That's what the Titans will do as this game is inside one minute. And Ottawa Glendorf prepared to head back to the capital for some unfinished business with Country Day. That will be sent out of play. 40 seconds remain. Just an impressive game from start to finish from Ottawa Glendorf. They put pressure right on the defense of Manchester from start to finish. Finally started to open things up here as they came out of the locker room. They wanted to make sure that Manchester did not have any momentum, didn't feel like they were still in this one as they got the two early goals to put this one away. And Their defense does what it has done all year long, and that has kept a very good offensive team in check. Titans going to give one here at the end. There's the shot. That one found the back of the net in the closing seconds off the foot of Bree Douglas. And that's your ball game. Ottawa Glendorf going to make it a four-goal differential. Does it count? They haven't put it up on the scoreboard yet. See, I'm not sure if in soccer if it has to be off the foot or across the line prior to the clock striking zero as it's still either way it's going to be an Ottawa Glendorf win and there goes the goal up on the scoreboard five to one so it looks like that one will go and that will be the final score here tonight indeed it will be Bree Douglas with the fifth Titan goal with one second remaining in the game that goal a service of Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima Wapak Delphus and St. Mary's call Lee's for all your catering needs Lee's famous re recipe chicken home style happens here well, Nate, that's a statement goal as the Titans get ready to head back to Columbus to take on Country Day. Unfinished business lies ahead. Yes, it does. You know, and that was a great way to kind of just put an exclamation point on this game that they had really controlled from start to finish. They show the type of team that they are. They can get things going offensively, defensively. A very prolific defensive team they went up against tonight, but that did not bother them at all. The pressure, just relentless pressure that they threw at Manchester all night long was just too much as they were, as Manchester was not able to handle it. A big win for Ottawa Glendorf, and as you mentioned, they move on Friday night. They have unfinished business. I think that when it's all said and done and they see that who they're going to play is Cincinnati Country Day, they're going to be happy. Yes. That's who they want. They they want to go back there. They want to prove that they can play with that team and beat that team and bring home a state title. Your goal scorers tonight, McKenna Seifker got things started eight minutes in with her first goal of the game. She wouldn't be finished. More on that in a moment. It looked like it was going to be one nothing going into the half, but Delaney Dooling just an absolute laser off the left foot with a minute 14 remaining in the first half to make it 2-0 Ottawa Glendorf. The Titans back on the board 26 seconds into that the second half. Like you said, Dave, that was the backbreaker. McKenna Seifker, her second goal she would cap it with a 30 uh, goal with a 34-29 remaining in the second half, too, for her hat trick. Katie Norris will get one in for Manchester with 1957 remaining in the ball game. But the Titans were able to even it out from there. We played most of the game from that point on. It looked like it was going to be a 4-1 game, and that would be it. But Bree Douglas with one tick left on the clock put it in for the Titans' fifth goal, and it ends up being 5-1 on the Structure Outdoor Scoreboard tonight. That'll do it for us on WOSM. For Nate Garlock, I'm Doug Jenkins. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.